Good afternoon, everyone. A very warm welcome to the Barony Hall. It's a magnificent and fitting venue uh, for this special day. And it's a day that some of you have been waiting almost two years for. Two years ago, COVID-19 changed all of our lives and it's had a profound effect on the university, changing the way we work, the way we teach and learn, and of course, preventing us from celebrating your graduation in person. We've worked hard over the last 24 months to keep our Strathclyde community safe while continuing to deliver a high quality education and student experience. And I've been hugely impressed by how our staff and students have responded and adapted. Now, with positive indications that we're coming out of the worst of this pandemic and with protection measures eased, we're delighted to be able to welcome you back in person to today's ceremony. In a moment, we'll commence our special ceremony where our graduates will be capped, an ancient public rite of passage and mark of achievement and a sign that you're part of a proud tradition stretching all the way back to the Enlightenment when Strathclyde was founded. Once the ceremony is finished, you'll be invited to join us at a reception in a new learning and teaching building just up the hill, hill, hill here, overlooking Rotten Row Gardens. But before we begin, let me just say this to you. Please savor this moment. And to families and friends and supporters gathered here, don't be shy in showing your appreciation during the ceremony. Don't rush the platform but please feel free to applaud and call out. I now declare this ceremony formally open. Thank you very much. I'd now like to invite Dr. Lizanne Bonner to present to our graduates. My Lord and Chancellor, in the name of the University and by the authority of Senate, I present to you these students. For the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Gender Studies, Maya Brandt Andreasen. <clears throat> For Research in Law, John Hughes. Ian Indiana Hawk Offer. <clears throat> for the degree of Master of Philosophy for Research in Law, Nicola Alexandra Zumidou. <clears throat> for the degree of Master of Letters in Digital Journalism, Holly Ann McCormick. In Media and Communication, Alexis Morgan Anthony. <clears throat> Hannah Beck. <clears throat> Paul Carruth. Megan Crawford. <clears throat> Dimas Bagus Yudana. <clears throat> Kendall Bora Green. <clears throat> Abigail Watkins. For the degree of Master of Science in Diplomacy and International Security, Nicola Biggerstaff. <clears throat> Gavin Glover. <clears throat> Rudy McLennan Langdon.
Liam McCarthy. In Historical Studies, Shona Leslie Joyce. <laughs> Stephanie Lee Lambie. <laughs> Aidan Pritchard. Nicholas Gordon Troy. <laughs> In Applied Gender Studies, Christina Bell. <laughs> Neve Mary Cannon. Diana Kathleen Fleming. <laughs> Bethany Margaret Gallagher. <laughs> In Applied Gender Studies Research Methods, Eleanor Gall. In Criminal Justice and Penal Change, Lisa Marie Fraser. <laughs> Karen Fullerton. <laughs> Rachel McLean Gracie. In Mediation and Conflict Resolution, Pauline McLeod. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Laws, Hazem A. Mohammed Abdel Gader. <laughs> Abdullah. Abdulaziz M. Al Shamari. <laughs> Jamie Duffy. <laughs> Arthur Lude. Christopher John McAllister. <laughs> In Construction Law, Sean Stephen Donnelly. <laughs> Katerina Maria Kozlowska. In Criminal Justice and Penal Change, Emma Arnold. <laughs> Rebecca Margaret Farker. <laughs> Chelsea Justine Garcia. Andrew Gibson. <laughs> Fiona Mary Govan. <laughs> Anne Jane Malloy. Sangmitra Singh. <laughs> In Global Environmental Law and Governance, David William Cody. <laughs> Malte Gut.
Catherine Hall. Humza Khan. Sebastian Kusil. Iona Moya McEntee. Rory Fraser McNeil. Meet Cor. Anik Nickel. Niels Ochner. Thomas Paxson. Nicola Catherine Sharman. <laughs> Saeed Tassawar. <laughs> Alana Grace Thorburn. In Information Technology and Telecommunications Law, Ayodeji Adebayo. <laughs> Olusola Ayorinde Odeja. <laughs> In International Commercial Law, Maria. Apostolito. <laughs> Alexander Hewitt. <laughs> Mikhail Masek. <laughs> Rita Modi. Dimitros Orfanos. <laughs> Francesca Peroni. <laughs> Arjun Raja Chandran. <laughs> Callum Allen Reed. In International Relations, Law and Security, Ilyanu Nife Ojuaru. <laughs> In Law and Finance, Marin Suhi Siegels. In professional legal practice, Laura Alejandra Bell. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Arts in History, Chantel Alexander. <laughs> Sophie Bowman. Erin Rose Callahan. <laughs> Jennifer Faith Gray. <laughs> Kath 
Catherine and Libida. <laughs> Monique Poppy Lepineri. <laughs> Samantha Mean. Callum Graham McGlashan. <laughs> Dara McTiernan. <laughs> Gregor Todd. <laughs> Zena Ali. James Kenneth Doran. <laughs> Alex Elliott. <laughs> Jacqueline Laurie Kelly. <laughs> Mark Kelly. Kirsty Margaret McLear. <laughs> Megan Emma Ord. <laughs> Charlotte Reed. Amy Louise Roger. <laughs> Scott Stalker. <laughs> Amy Turnbull. <laughs> Kerry Weir. Douglas Peter McLaughlin. <laughs> In history and education, Catherine Margaret Hope. Hope. <laughs> In history and Italian with international study, Ian Donald Duff. In History and Journalism and Creative Writing, Olivia Karen Ross. <laughs> Ailey Waddle. <laughs> Rachel Louise McGuigan. In History and Law, Sophie Dick. <laughs> In History and Politics and International Relations, Hannah Antonia Beasel. <laughs> Ruben Duffy. Rebecca Fru. <laughs> Eva Jane Hepburn. <laughs> Beth Hope Holmes. <laughs> Callum Alexander Donald McKechnie.
James Ashton. <laughs> Catherine Edith Marlene Calderwood. <laughs> Neve Mary Cameron. <laughs> Andrew Comney. Erin Crockett. <laughs> Jade DeJulis. <laughs> Gregor McCulloch Finlay. <laughs> Kieran Foley. Melissa Angela McCulloch. <laughs> Paul McKee. <laughs> Cara Alison McMurkey. <laughs> Callum Pettigrew. Johnston Simpson. John Connor Stewart. Zoe Sutton Adamson. Amy Rose Logan. In History and Politics and International Relations with International Study, Ilsa Dorothy Nielsen. <laughs> Ross McCaskill. <laughs> Kira Murray. In History and Psychology, Lauren Fidus. <laughs> Rachel Louise Murray. <laughs> In History and Social Policy, Claire Broadhurst. Celine Cullen. <laughs> Jennifer Henderson. <laughs> In History with English with International Study, Emily Kelly. In History with International Study, Sean William Keane. <laughs> Kirsty Ness. <laughs> George Dugray Masson. In History with Law, Sarah Elizabeth Peggy Roberts. <laughs> In History with Politics and International Relations, Johnny Anderson. <laughs> Mary
Michael Ricardo Donati. In Journalism and Creative Writing and English, Martina Elizabeth Bolt Christmas. Anna Elizabeth Bryan. Elizabeth Kearney. Jennifer Lauren Dempsey. Dempsey. <laughs> Ellen Neve Leslie. <laughs> Holly Fleming. <laughs> Scott John Hay. Campbell Reed, <laughs> Ewan James MacDonald, <laughs> in journalism and creative writing and English with international study, Alana Elizabeth Lockhart. In Journalism and Creative Writing and History, Holly Smith. <laughs> Darren Lynch. <laughs> Zara Ann Ainsworth. Stephen Charles Carlin. <laughs> In journalism and creative writing and Italian with international study, William Robert Benison Garner. <laughs> In journalism and creative writing and politics and international relations, Lockheed Ma. In Journalism and Creative Writing and Social Policy, Jenny Bradley. <laughs> In Journalism and Creative Writing and Spanish with International Study, Monica Rumanova Metodieva. Abigail Tamosowski. <laughs> For the degree of postgraduate diploma in professional legal practice, Wendy Ann Archibald. <laughs> Sean Matthew Ross Byrne. Carly Cooper. Monica Franchi. Andrea McCauley. Salma Melo. Anastasia Morris. <laughs> Lily Morrison. <laughs> Lily 
Maria Rose Murray. For the degree of Master of Science in Applied Gender Studies, Francesca Calder. We're all seated now, so let me once again welcome you to this special congregation. And of course, it, as I said earlier, it's an unusual one because you've already received your degrees and graduated. We were determined to offer all our graduates the chance to come back here when the opportunity arose to celebrate uh, your achievements in front of your families, friends and supporters because it's undoubtedly the highlight of our academic uh, calendar and we couldn't let it go unacknowledged. We wrote to more than 8,500 of you and we'll be welcoming around half of that number back to Glasgow from across Scotland, across the UK and across the world. A total of, I think it's 22 ceremonies. And I might say that the class of 2021 are particularly special having faced the unique challenges brought about by the coronavirus pandemic. You've faced disruption by the way you've had to learn, socialize, sit for your exams, and you've gone out of the into the world at a time of unprecedented challenge. But in the face of this, you've shown courage, determination, resilience, and adaptability. And as you forge your new careers, the university's values of being ambitious, bold, innovative, collaborative, and people-oriented will stand you in good stead. In a short while, you'll be invited to join an academic procession when we leave the hall. This is a symbol that you're no longer students, but you're now full members of the academic community at Strathclyde, one that now numbers over 175,000 across the world. You follow in the footsteps of many graduates before, including illustrious alumni such as David Livingston, John Logie Baird, Dame Elish Angiolini, Baroness Helen Little, Baroness Annabel Goldie, Sir Tom Hunter, and I could go on. Your friends, family, and tutors here with you today are immensely proud of what you've achieved and of confidence in and continue to support your future success. So let us show appreciation with a collective round of applause for our alumni. I also know that throughout your academic careers, you will all have had the support and encouragement of your families, friends, supporters, and teachers. Many of them are here today, and I'm sure you're extremely grateful for their support. So let's take the opportunity to show all of us our appreciation and gratitude with a round of applause. Thank you. And similarly, all of our graduates have been helped by our wonderful staff who've worked hard to provide you with a first-class education and an outstanding student experience and for whom your success is actually their reward. So graduates, please join me in showing your appreciation to them. Your success and our success as a university is due to the efforts 
of our staff who are delivering our vision of Strathclyde as a leading international technological university that's socially progressive and makes a positive difference to the lives of its students, to society and to the world. Now, I know many of you are already pursuing careers or further studies that you've set your sights on. And I hope that the last year or two has been a successful and productive time for you. We must acknowledge that you may have graduated from university at a time when the world needs all the knowledge, skills, passion and commitment it can muster to tackle some huge problems. This includes the climate emergency we're facing. At COP26, hosted here in Glasgow, showed us urgent action is needed and global collaboration and inventiveness is the key to creating and implementing the solutions to this crisis. Our university is working across all of our faculties and disciplines to address the technological, scientific, economic, educational and societal challenges we face to reduce our impact on the planet that sustains us. And realising these solutions forms the essence of Strathclyde's mission to make the world better educated, more prosperous, more healthy, fair and secure and deliver against the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Do you know, if the COVID-19 pandemic has shown us anything, it's essential and crucial role that science and universities play in helping us overcome challenges. It was science, working with researchers at university, that delivered vaccines for COVID-19 in record time. And it's science and education that will help us address our other challenges too. The Faculty of Humanities and Social Science has many achievements to be proud of including Dr Chris McCorkendale Law being appointed as an advisor to the Scottish Parliament's Constitution Europe External Affairs and Culture Committee. And there's Louise Welsh, author and alumna of Strathclyde's creative writing course, publishing her sixth novel, The Second Cut. It's a sequel to her debut novel, The Cutting Room. Psychology and politics alumna Louise Pringle was appointed East Renfrewshire Council's Director of Business Operations and Partnerships. And Professor Alan Miller of Law was announced as Chair of a national collaborative established to inform Scotland's national mission on drug deaths. The group has been formed to ensure the experience and rights of people affected by drugs are reflected in all aspects of the mission. Do you know, when former US President Barack Obama visited our campus in November last year during his visit to COP26, his message to the waiting crowds was simple. As he paused on the steps of the learning and teaching building, which we're going to later, he shouted, get active. It's a rallying call that many of us can relate to and one that encapsulates the can-do attitude of our Strathclyde community. Strathclyde is an institution where freedom of thought is encouraged and valued, an institution exemplified by tolerance and inclusivity, one which seeks to play a significant role in shaping the world we live in through our teaching, our research, and through you, our graduates. We hope that you use the knowledge and wisdom you've gained at Strathclyde to play your part in bringing people together to find common ground for a greater humanity and to work together to build a brighter future, demonstrating Strathclyde's socially progressive values and ethos of tolerance, pluralism, and a desire to make a positive difference. And as Strathclyde graduates, you can champion knowledge, address social injustice, question inappropriate behaviors and actions, including by those in authority, to help shape a better world. We really hope that you will continue to stay in touch with us, to let us know how you're getting on and to continue to contribute to Strathclyde. Because through the involvement of our alumni that we can provide a first-class education and student experience for you. And we now ask you to think of those who will follow you. Enough of this. It's now time to celebrate your achievements with your friends and loved ones. So on behalf of the University of Strathclyde, congratulations again to each and every one of you. I wish you all every success in the future. Thank you.
I now formally declare this congregation closed. I would like now to invite you to join the academic procession and I ask family and friends to remain in the hall until the procession has left the building and then join us in the learning and teaching building at the top of the hill for refreshments. Could you please be upstanding? <laughs>